Well, good morning. I am so happy to finally uh, have an opportunity to come to Austin, Texas. I've been hearing all about it for many years, and even though with my HGTV show I've traveled to almost uh, all the states in the country, it wasn't until now that I got to come to Austin, and I have to say it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice to see that um, uh, college football competitive spirit is alive and well in the great state of Texas. Um, and, you know, being a Florida Gator, I know all about college football rivalries. Um, and I've already been given three gifts shaped like the state of Texas since I've been here. So, <laughs> and, um, you know, what's funny about the name of my HGTV show, uh, your, you know, my house is worth what? Um, when we started the show, it was always worth more. And then um, over the last uh, year or so, it started to become less. Um, but right here in Austin, I think that you are so fortunate and that, you know, prices have, have not really fallen substantially. And this is one of the few rare areas in the United States where if I came and did a show, I bet most of you your house would be worth more. Um, and one of the reasons that I uh, am really especially pleased to be here to talk to you about uh, the advantages of, of home ownership and tips for buyers and sellers is the fact that Austin is such a rarity in the real estate market today. Um, having traveled to real estate markets across the country, uh, most of them truly are struggling. And I am now a resident of Seattle, Washington, but I lived in practiced real estate in the state of Florida for many years. And, um, you know, your average, you know, year on year drop uh, in, in or depreciation, we would experience in two to three weeks. So it just goes to show you that you know, I'd rather have a 4.5% drop in values than a 40% drop in value. So you just really want to put in perspective what a unique market that you all live in. And uh, I really want to impress upon you all that um, it's, it's, a really, it's a really great climate for buyers and sellers. Um, so I really do encourage you to just ignore the national news reports. You know, I've been, I say every time I talk, uh, you know, on the topic of real estate, that real estate truly is regional. And um, as my friend Andrew said, it's kind of like, you know, predicting the weather. You, you know, the weather is different all over the United States. I know this because I moved from the Sunshine State to one of the wettest spots in the United States, and now I'm wondering why I did that. Um, but you know, real estate is the is the same way. Um, you know, I think you've already heard a lot uh, in detail a lot of the advantages of the current real estate market. Um, affordability truly does sell homes. And some statistics came out recently that showed for the first uh, uh, couple of months, first three months of 2009, um, the majority of the homes that were sold were deemed affordable. And that's the first time that's happened in 18 years. And I think that that is really an exciting statistic uh, for those who are considering purchasing a home maybe for the first time. Um, historically low interest rates, you know, when coupled with that strong factor of affordability really creates a great situation. Obviously, we've learned today that you have to be extremely uh, qualified to get a loan. But what I want to encourage you to do is if, if if, if you're not in the position yet to be able to afford to, you know, get, get a mortgage, at least you can set yourself up on a game plan, you know, six month, one year, two year game plan to get all of your ducks in a row, to get, you know, in a financial position where you can go out and purchase a home. And there is no huge rush because we're not going to see you know, a double-digit appreciation. So I don't think that there is that frenzy to go and have to purchase a house now, even if you're not ready, because if you don't, prices are going to go up 10, 20 percent. It's simply not going to happen. So, um, you know, if you're not fin in a financial position to do it now, it's something, it's something to, um, to look forward to and to plan for. Um, also, what's really great, uh, and this is if you're building a house or if you are buying a house that needs some uh, improvements or if you have decided to stay put and you don't plan on moving for a while, if you're a current homeowner, 
um, you know, you can get grossly reduced prices on services, materials, and labor. So if you uh, can go ahead and do some improvements in your home, you can really, really negotiate some really great deals right now. And what's so fantastic about that is, you know, you're, you're getting all of these bargains, you're getting these um, discounts uh, on materials and on, on labor. Uh, to make improvements to a property that are going to increase your home's value over the long term because real estate is truly a long-term investment and for most people uh, the, your largest investment and so to be able to cut down on the costs of material and labor I've seen it in some cases of 30 40 50 percent um, you know that it does not affect the return on that investment return on the investment will be the same, but you have you know, paid substantially less to get that return. And I think that that's something that's very, 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 very favorable and should be encouraging uh, to anyone who is considering making improvements to your home, uh, whether it be because you, you plan on living there for many years and you just wanna you know, increase the quality of your home, or if you're planning on selling at some point in the future. Um, uh, there's a lot of words on the screen now, and, and I tend to, uh, to stay away from slides with a lot of content, but that's because there's such an incredible value in home ownership, and these are some really great statistics. So if you are thinking about buying a home, especially for the first time, um, there are some really uh, neat things I want to share with you. Uh, eight out of ten economists believe that home prices will rise in the next five years. Um, homeowners may deduct mortgage interest and property taxes as an expense against income. I mean, there are a lot of tax benefits to, to, to owning real estate. I know that a lot of um, uh, uh, the tax laws are changing as well to, to, to give um, taxpayers a break. Um, capital gains exclusion on your home sale for a single individual, up to 250000 For a married couple who files jointly, half a million dollars. Um, so that's really great. And then there's this new $8,000 first-time home buyer tax credit, but folks, that's only uh, going to be good through the end of 2009. And that is, a, I mean, those are substantial tax savings. So if you think you are ready or you're going to be ready to purchase a home uh, at some point this year, uh, you know, don't don't waver. That's a really fantastic, uh, you know, credit that you're going to be able to write off on your taxes. Um, there's a lot of things I can, th I can think right now about doing with $8,000. Um, fixed rate mortgage or a hedge against inflation. Um, real estate has historically appreciated at a higher rate than inflation in most regions. I, you know, I think that these subprime mortgages and adjustable rate mortgages and interest only loans are one of the reasons why we're in the situation that we are now. And you know, I'm very fiscally conservative and I, I really, uh, I'm glad to see that it's a little bit more difficult to get financing now because you truly do need to, to be qualified to get a loan. And I think that it's really important to, to go ahead and focus on the 30-year fixed loan options that are out there, regardless of what's going on in the real estate market. Even when it was booming, a couple of years ago, um, as a real estate agent and broker, um, I was very hesitant to work with clients who wanted to get an option arm adjustable rate mortgage. And I rarely worked with clients who uh, were willing to put less than 10% down uh, because I care about my customers and I care about their financial well being. And unfortunately, uh, you know, this foreclosure crisis is affecting everyone. I mean, how many of you know someone? who's in foreclosure right now. I mean, friends, family, I, I mean, it's affecting, um, if it's not affecting you, it's five degrees from Kevin Bacon, right? So um, the average homeowner's net worth um, is $234,200 compared with $5,100 for renters. And over 10 years, a $10,000 investment in the stock market at 10% market rate of return would yield $23,600. Now, if you put that same investment as a down payment on a $200,000 home at normal appreciation rate of 5%, it would return nearly five times the stock market return at $110,300. I know a lot of people say that, you know, that stocks outperform real estate. Well, 
I think the numbers speak for themselves, and I disagree. Plus, there are a lot of statistics that uh, back up, um, you know, the value of home ownership. There are a lot of social benefits as well as financial benefits, and I actually think the social benefits are, are what's really staggering and really interesting. Uh, it, it's obviously an investment in your future, uh, but it, it improves neighborhoods. I mean, think about it. Owners are 20% more likely to improve their homes than renters, and it improves the quality of life in certain neighborhoods. When a neighborhood uh, is, is improved, uh, you know, it becomes a safer place Crime rates typically drop, more people move in, school systems improve. It just creates a better quality of life for everyone. So it improves the quality of life in communities. And it provides stability. Uh, owners are also 15% more likely to vote, volunteer more time for political and charitable causes than renters. Um, and creates a positive environment for families. Uh, and I think this is very interesting. Children of homeowners are 59% more likely to become homeowners, 25% more likely to graduate high school, and 116% more likely to graduate college. I think those are some pretty staggering social benefits to the value of homeownership. Oh, and by the way, um, a lot of this information, there's more statistics that are actually available um, on housingmarketfacts.com, which is a website pro uh, provided by uh, the National Association of Realtors. Um, now, for the rest of my presentation, I want to talk about um, following real estate trends. Uh, I think that in you know, most of the country right now, it is truly a buyer's market. Um, so that's why I wanted to spend a few minutes and to sort of impress upon you if you are considering purchasing a home for the first time, uh, the value of doing so. And I think that now is just an incredible time to be making that decision to go ahead and uh, purchase a home. But what's really great and really unique about the Austin market is the fact that you're so different from the rest of the country. And um, I actually, you know, was uh, in conversation this morning and, and learned a very interesting statistic that, you know, in your under $250,000 um, price range here in the greater Austin area, there is about a six month or less uh, supply of inventory, which is considered a seller's market. Who would have thought? If you turn on the news, it's not what you're hearing on a national level, uh, but that's really, really music to my ears. And it really should be encouraging for all of you. So I do want to spend a few minutes uh, talking to sellers about how you can maximize your opportunity to sell your home uh, for you know, top dollar in today's market and appeal to buyers. And also, if you are considering purchasing a home, these are going to be some really cool trends uh, for you to take a look at as well. Uh, but one of the important things is to, to, to look at your home, even when you're making improvements, and consider what the next homeowner that purchases and lives in your house, are they going to like what you did? And, and granted, I, I, I think that we all need some creative license to make our homes you know, livable according to our tastes and our styles. But I have got to tell you, I've seen some really interesting things traveling around with my HGTV show, that uh, most people would just not want in their houses. Um, let me think. Um, I, I, I remember being in one house in Washington, D.C., and this guy had turned his office into a bat cave. Now, I just don't think that that's going to appeal to the average home buyer. I'm, I mean, he had uh, Batman figurines of all shapes and sizes. He had masks that I was so tempted to try on. Um, uh, but they wouldn't let me film with a Batman mask on. I was highly disappointed. Uh, but I've seen some pretty outrageous things like, like that. And that's fine if, if you're going to live there, uh, you know, for a few years. But, you, you know, really th that wild and, 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 and crazy taste needs to be toned down before you go to sell. And I think that that's something that ever, everyone knows. But when you're going to do a major renovation, if it's something beyond paint, beyond carpet, beyond things like that that are simply cosmetic, you really need to consider if this is going to be a trend just for the next couple of years or if this is going to be something that is going to still look and feel luxurious and be appealing to the average home buyer 5, 10, 15 years from now.
And traveling around with my HGTV show, I've seen a lot of trends go in and out. Um, and uh, it's, it's been really, really interesting. Um, what's in? Well, first of all, home buyers. Um, you know, it's in most areas not a seller's market. I think this is kind of a unique position that you guys are in. Um, but in most areas, it is, it is a buyer's market, and so sellers cannot be unrealistic. Uh, people are, tend to be very sensitive about their design style, and oftentimes realtors have a hard time presenting the idea of staging or decluttering to their, um, to their clients um, because they take it personally. Uh, folks, it's, not, it's nothing personal. I mean, there, there's, just, there's a simple science to you know, decluttering your home, to staging your home, to, uh, to making rooms look brighter, larger, getting unnecessary furniture out of there. Um, and it's, it, it's not personal, it really, it, it, it really helps sell a home faster. Um, so it's important to understand the psychology of the buyer. Um, and they're looking for the largest, brightest, nicest spaces with the most high-end features and fixtures that they can get for the right price. Um, down payments, that's also in these days. No more, you know, 0% financing. Um, energy efficiency features, which you just heard a great presentation on, so I don't need to go into too much detail there. Destination bathrooms. This is something really cool that um, I'm starting to see uh, as I travel for my show across the country. And a destination, destination bathroom is really a bathroom with like a freestanding tub or maybe one that's in the center of the bathroom as opposed to you know being fixed up against the wall. I'm actually starting to see wet bars and bathrooms with flat screen televisions. And these are not gigantic, I'm not talking gigantic master bathrooms in huge McMansions. I'm talking about regular homes. And, you know, if, if there is an area or a nook that's not being used and you can do, you can stage it creatively like that, buyers really think that's cool. Especially first-time home buyers because purchasing a home is really an emotional experience. And for a first-time home buyer, that, the emotions are even more heightened and they're more likely to buy a house based on all those cool features than they are, you know, uh, based on, you know, some, some of the things that a more seasoned home buyer is going to look for. So emotions run high and all of these little unique features that set your home apart make a difference. Um, so actually, yeah, I've started to see that trend. Bathrooms are destinations. For men, we know that's always been the case, but now for women too. <laughs> Uh, outdoor living spaces that look in interior um, are starting to see people actually and um, the, the, the reverse as well starting to bring organic um, uh, features into the home and also taking outdoor living spaces and making them more livable. Um, one example of that that I'm starting to see more often is people putting in fire pits in outdoor fireplaces with um, furniture uh, around them where uh, the family can congregate and you know just enjoy hanging out outside. Um, uh, the, the stuff like that really goes a long way. And I don't think there's enough emphasis uh, placed on the importance of backyard curb appeal. We always place importance on, you know, front yard curb appeal because, you know, obviously driving up to the home, that's your first impression. Uh, but backyard cur curb appeal, I think, is, uh, is just about number two on the list uh, because people have a hard time envisioning what to do with an outdoor space, and if you've already staged it for them, it really makes a big difference. Plus, most people are not, don't have green thumbs. I don't know about you, but I look at a plant and it dies. Not one of my talents. So if that's already been staged for me, that, that's exciting to me and a lot of other people as well who do not have green thumbs. Built-in closet organization systems. This is so easy. Go to Lowe's. You know, you spend 100 bucks, you get some, uh, you know, of those organization systems to put in into your closets, especially if your home has smaller closets. Anytime you can add additional storage, these are extra bonus features that people really want to see. Um, specialty rooms is really a big thing now. So I travel around for my show. I'm starting to see more and more home theaters, media rooms. Uh, you know, there are a lot of rooms that have become obsolete. I'm going to get to those in a minute. You know, so um, I'm seeing finished attic spaces be turned into media rooms. Uh, uh, living rooms, I think it's on the next slide, what's out? Well, traditional standalone living rooms are, are kind of out now. You know, homes are, are increasingly being uh, built and being 
renovated to be more open, where the kitchen is uh, open to the living space. Um, there are some parts of the country where I know that a traditional formal dining room is still a real valuable asset. That's not true in about half of the markets in the country, um, but I know that that room is still important. I don't know here about Austin, but in most parts of the country, living rooms are out. Um, Manland, where's Manland usually? The basement or the garage? So, you know, it's really important too to make sure that you declutter the garage and you put some cool organization systems in there too. Because typically, um, when I was practicing real estate, the first place that the woman would go is the kitchen and her husband would go to the garage. And she'd be looking around for her husband and I'd be like, he's out there. So, you know, it's really important to, to make sure that you focus on those areas. Um, it, you know, environmentally friendly finishes and materials uh, just goes to being more eco-conscious. Um, using, a, uh, you know, I'm starting to see some really cool things like uh, using bamboo instead of hardwood floors. Um, you know, if you really have an artistic flair, you can go out and get scrap wood and you can lay down scrap wood in rooms and it creates really a really cool kind of weathered pattern and you can do all of this for a fraction of the cost. Also, um, I don't know if you have one here, but um, Habitat for Humanity across the country, they've got these home improvement centers where what they do is they get, um, they get materials donated to them by Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, all of these big chains, what they do is they discount them about 70% off of retail and sell them. And then they use the proceeds to actually go out and build the houses. So if you want to do some Weekend Warrior DIY projects yourself, and this is a great tip for anyone, whether you're a homeowner or you're a first-time home buyer and you know you're going to have to tackle some home improvements, it's a great place to go and get some really big discounts. Um, Wired homes, it's really important to make sure that you have plugs everywhere. I mean, we're increasingly more technologically savvy, and people want to be able to plug in that computer, that laptop, that printer, that phone jack. Um, you know, give, you need to give people lots of different options. Um, long gone are, are, you know, this is the desirability of having one phone jack, one cable jack, you know, and one power outlet in a room that simply does not suffice for today's buyers. Um, Lux touches, obviously, you know, lighting, uh, you know, uh, upper end hardware in the kitchens and baths, um, things like that uh, really go a long way. Crown molding. Um, and then spacious, stylish utility rooms. Anything where you can create organizational bonuses for people, they really, really appreciate it because these are these are just the small details. Really, it's not the big it's not the big things that are that are selling houses today. It's the little details. It's extra thought because right now, in in most parts of the country, the buyers have so much inventory to choose from. They can pick and choose at their luxury. And so it's important to make sure that your house stands out and you have to put the extra detail work into it. And then concealed appliances. Now, I'm, I'm talking behind pocket doors. I'm not talking about, you know, <laughs> where, where they actually make them look like um, uh, cabinets. That's way out. That's, that was out, I think, in the 80s. Uh, but people are starting to um, actually conceal the appliances behind pocket doors, which creates a very modern, streamlined look in the kitchen. Um, and what's out? Unrealistic home sellers. Uh, double digit home value appreciation. I'm just going to kind of list through these because I got my, um, uh, my, my countdown there. Uh, option arms. Living rooms, I said that a minute ago. We're starting, if you have a living room, you know, and you're thinking about going to sell, a lot of people are restaging them as home offices. They're restaging them as pool table rooms, game rooms, that type of thing. Uh, and, you know, people want to see a home as livable and experiential. And it's really, really important to get rid of those obsolete functions from, from rooms and, and restage them. Um, McMansions are out. It's all about quality, not quantity. Coming from South Florida, I can tell you that I was doing walkthroughs with buyers right before closing on half a million, $750,000 homes where doorknobs were coming off in my hand. I mean, uh, builders were building homes so fast that they stopped paying attention to the quality of detail. And people now, you know, the buyers have the luxury of choosing. Um, they're, you know, making sure that they're buying a home that's built solidly. Um, so it's important to make sure that all of that's taken care of. And that's important to look for, too, buyers. Um, obese ceiling heights, um, you know, these grand foyers where you walk in and you've, you know, you've got 15-foot-high ceilings 
It's just out now. It's not what people are looking for. It's a waste of space. People would rather have the additional square footage upstairs. Uh, pioneering locations. Uh, you know, now that the market has slowed down, people are less likely to go out and uh, uh, buy a fixer-upper in a transitional neighborhood, um, uh, in a gentrified neighborhood. They're more likely to want to go to those tried and true neighborhoods that have held value for the last 10, 15, 20 years, great reputations, uh, great school districts. So people are going back to the tried and true neighborhoods. Um, balconies as a marketing gimmick, if you have a condo or if you have a balcony on the second floor of a home, if you can get any type of furniture out there, even if it's a table, a little table, a little stool, uh, um, even a little grill, whatever you can do, uh, gone, you know, is, is the ability to market that place with just a little, you know, oh, I can hang my head out kind of balcony, you, you know, it, people want to see that it's a functional space. So if you can make it a functional space and stage it as such, it'll really go a long way. Mosaic tile is out. That's what they're telling me. <laughs> and a retro 1970s chick. But I never thought that it was a good idea to put brown shag carpet anywhere in a home. That's just me. But the last couple of years, you know, that was, that was really kind of in. And, you know, we were, we were seeing this 1970s retro come back. Well, that's out. Now, you know, stuff like that I really think is a fad. I really want to stress to you, you know, go with, go with those high-end stone materials. Go with those nice neutral palettes, you know, imported Italian uh, stones. Stuff like that that, you know, they were building with, you know, thousands of years ago. You know, it worked then, it's working now, it'll, it'll work 10 years from now. Because, uh, you know, how many of you have re, re, redid your kitchen 10 years ago, and now you're looking at it going, man, why did I do that? i got to redo it all over again. Yeah, so it's really important to, to really look at materials and say, is this going to still hold value and still be considered, um, you know, an upgrade in the long run? And... There are a lot of must-do updates, exterior enhancements, minor bathroom remodeling, um, interior paint, flooring, light fixtures, staging areas, uh, you know, all, all of these things, uh, attic bedrooms. I already mentioned conquering clutter and organizational assistance, so I always do this. I get ahead of myself and talk about all of my slides, and then I get to them, and I've already talked about it all. Um, garage makeover, yeah, I did all that. Um, so, but these, these are all things, if you're getting ready to sell your house, focus on these areas. Now, there's one other crucial area that I want to point out before I wrap up, and that's when it comes to making first impressions, your front yard curb appeal is important. However, the second most important area is going to be whatever they see the minute they open the front door. And it might be a grand foyer with a chandelier, or it might be a really boring, long, dark hallway. Doesn't matter what type of space it is, make it wow. Make it wow, because that is their first impression. They want to open the door and almost fall over your furniture. Um, put down a cool, uh, a cool runner rug. You know, may, you know, do something with, with maybe put a funky light fixture up. Even if it's the only cool light fixture I have in the whole house, that's what they see when they come in and they start to form this impression as they walk through your house. So it's a really crucial area that I don't think um, is really placed a lot of importance on, but it really truly is. And lastly, work with a realtor. Um, you know, more and more, uh, realtors are, they're really finding out what their niche is and their specialty and marketing themselves according to that specialty. And every single buyer is different and every single seller is different. They're in a different, you're in a different situation, you have different needs. And, um, you know, there is a realtor out there who excels with the background, the knowledge, and the expertise needed for your precise situation. So go out and look and research in your, in, in your local realtor community and, f and interview realtors that are specialized in that particular niche to help you with your needs. Um, they're out there, they're excellent, and um, there is just tremendous value to working with a realtor. Uh, saves a lot of time a lot, and a lot of headache and a lot, a lot of expensive mistakes.